many people know who Megalodon is, what incredible sizes this animal has, and what heroic acts he commits. Have you ever heard about the Red Megalodon? About how dangerous it is? What differs it from the usual Megalodon? And what's this animal interesting for? You'll learn it in this edition. Smart Pizzas with you. Today, I'll tell you about the biggest shark ever. We all know about the Megalodons, those giant sharks of the past that make you shiver just thinking about them. But would you think that, in fact, along with them, there was another, rarer, but not less dangerous species? As you may have guessed, I'm talking about the Red Megalodon. Scientists have spoken out recently on this score. Anyway, any accurate information on that subject simply doesn't exist. From what's known, the red giant shark of the past was inferior to the one we know in size. At the same time, it never lacked aggressiveness and self-confidence. All because of the fact that the red shark, in contrast to the classic gray one, led a gregarious way of life, hunting in groups like modern orcas. Killer whales show us how effective it is. I'm afraid of even imagining how it was in those times when together with orcas, megalodons existed as red as blood, eternally hungry and agile. Speaking of their agility, they are told to have been second to none. They were so fast that, in theory, they could take prey away even from their larger grey brethren. This of course wasn't often, but such cases occurred. The constant migration need was a disadvantage for these fish. Because of their excessive efficient hunting, the prey in one place or another ran out relatively quickly. There was nothing left to eat, and the megalodons were forced to go to new places where they hadn't hunted. There's nothing wrong with that, as it might seem, but it wasn't. Every such migration is a chance to meet other, equally strong predators who will be happy to defend their territory and fight till the last drop of blood. Sure as hell, in such battles for the territory, though not at first, not the second, and maybe not even the third time, the megalodons were defeated. It's popularly believed that because of this feature, the species was incredibly rare and soon became extinct. Well, now let's also remember the classic Megalodon, about the very terrible and invincible monster with the usual grey colouring which could swallow almost any other sea creature. No wonder that when mankind first discovered these fish, we thought we'd discovered some skeletons of ancient snakes, something like small dragons or maybe even dinosaurs. However, all those findings turned out to be megalodon teeth. They were triangular in shape, and because of their giant size were not similar to anything known to science before. By the way, if anyone doesn't know, we can study the megalodons only by the teeth and fossilized spinal bones found. As with all sharks, the skeleton of the megalodons was formed from cartilage, not bones. This means that most of the fossilized specimens are practically not preserved. However, it's known that those teeth could have reached up to 20 centimeters long. Do you have any idea what that means? Remember your rulers from school? So this was the size of one monster's tooth. And they weren't thin and narrow, they were wide. Given the lack of well-preserved fossil remains of the megalodons, scientists are forced to reconstruct the size based on comparisons with the great white shark. No one can tell you with 100% guarantee how correct it is. It seems to me that there's nothing wrong with it. It's unlikely that the ancient shark differed from its modern counterpart in any fundamental way other than size and strength. However, there are many other things that follow from the size. For example, the same bite. Megalodon had one of the most powerful bites in the history of the Earth. According to scientists, the force of its bite exceeded the one of the white sharks we know about six times and even more. Although it was not always that during such an important process as hunting, Megalodon resorted to his jaws. Scientists believe the giant was smart and could use several different styles of hunting, depending on the size and behavior of its potential victim. If it was relatively small and didn't know that someone was chasing it, the Megalodon could simply hide in the area, somewhere behind a rock or on the bottom. When the enemy swam by, it made a sharp dash and quickly ate the enemy. However, if the enemies were larger, the legendary shark also didn't drift and was glad to hunt them. Except that its principle was radically different. In this case, Megalodon swam up to the enemy. When it began to swam away, the shark caught up and started to ram through. 
predator couldn't pursue its enemy for a long time because of its physical limitations. Anyway, it was still enough to send whales and other large creatures to the bottom. In fact, this kind of big game hunting was a priority for the Megalodon. It didn't feed on plankton and other minnows. That was vital for it to get more than a ton of food from somewhere in a day. That's why, over time, as many fish learned to avoid its attacks, the predator's life became more difficult. The Megalodon wasn't ready to dive deep, and there was less and less food in open waters. Along with this, the water temperature changed, which only negatively affected the health of the monster as well as its diet. After all, most of the fish swam away along the cold currents, whereas Megalodon remained in the warm ones. That's how the shark died out, not living up to our days. Although, to be honest, I don't even know whether this is good or bad. Wait, why do we have to wonder? Let's just analyze what would have happened if the Megalodon were alive and understand whether it's good or bad. To do this, we need to travel back many millions of years, in those times when the giant predators were still prowling the darkest and most dangerous waters of our oceans. Protected by their thick skin, the sharks were true torpedoes, and it was impossible for almost anyone to escape their attack. As soon as their jaws caught up with their enemies, their opponents were immediately defeated. Now, would you be surprised if I told you that such a dangerous and cool monster actually exists today? Yes, there is such a theory in alternative scientific circles, which seems delusional to many. Nevertheless, sailors from different parts of the Earth regularly report super sharks of unimaginable sizes. So, in 1918, one of the most famous sea travelers of that time stated with complete certainty that he personally had seen some ghostly giant shark, surpassing its counterparts in size several times. Ten years later, an American writer also saw the same predator exactly there and immediately classified it as a megalodon. All the theories about the extinction of the predator are based purely on the fact that the shark could not adapt to cold waters and new conditions. But do you really believe that? Do you really believe that such a skilled predator could move to different waters over the course of evolution? Personally, I find it completely delusional and nonsensical. I'm almost certain that the Megalodon adapted to the new conditions with abundance of food. As it stands, the shark definitely survived, which means that it's still swimming somewhere out there, far, far away on the deep bottom. However, this thought doesn't make me feel any better, rather the opposite. Imagine the faces of fishermen who, with their own eyes, observed this monster. It doesn't even matter that they didn't believe them, they know the truth, and they're going to have to dive back into the ship and set sail. I don't know, I'd probably be enslaved by fear and quit the business for good. Why sail where such a fearsome predator might dwell? The story has only one thing to be happy about. If it's true and the Megalodon is alive, it's unlikely to hunt humans. As I've already told, it eats more than a ton of food a day. That means it's equal to the human equivalent of more than 10 Homo sapien individuals per day. The animal won't find so many around in the water, so it's much easier to hunt the same whales and other large sea creatures. It's not for nothing that people often find the breathless bodies of giants washed ashore. Could all these cases be interconnected by one huge, sharp, and merciless megalodon jaw. As it stands, only other ancient creatures could help humans. If the megalodon survived, why couldn't one of them hide on the bottom together with them? I'm not against speculating on the subject, comparing megalodon with the rest of the most dangerous monsters of the ocean. And we start with the mosasaurs. These guys are not timid. They were over 56 feet long and definitely were aware of their worth. They could accelerate up to 12 miles per hour. When they caught up with the victim, they bit and didn't release it. The predators didn't feed on tiny creatures but large fish, crustaceans, and sea creatures with shells. However, it's worth recognizing that no matter how formidable the mosasaur was, it really had no chance against a megalodon. The legendary giant had one of the largest jaws in history. It wasn't possible to set anybody or anything against, not even a long mosasaur with its stunning grip. On the top of everything else, it's not certain that a mosasaur could have harmed a prehistoric shark at all. After all, its scales were at least 20 inches wide, whereas both the mosasaur itself and most underwater inhabitants in general had almost no protective layer. 
We can compare it to the snake's skin as thin and smooth. It seems that we cannot compare them more, but it's not so simple. There were quite a lot of mosasaurs, in every sense of the word. How many species of mosasaurs there were, the scientists still can't say for sure. Only one thing is known. All of them were characterized as highly bloodthirsty, agile, and social. This way, some species were similar to our orcas. That's why they could conduct a joint hunt for the benefit of the family. And so, if a megalodon had encountered them, the both would have had an equal chance to win. So the megalodons would even come over to the side of the mosasaurs. I suggest that we change our potential fighter. It's not so difficult to do that within the framework of ancient creatures. We throw out a couple of letters from the first part of the word and write something completely different instead of them. Somehow this new giant came into being called Spinosaurus. To be honest, purely visually it inspires much more confidence than Mosasaur. So we have every chance to finally defeat the Megalodons. So there's no doubt that Spinosaurus, with its size and capabilities, was a top predator. You don't even have to explain why. You can just look at this alien, which is about 50 feet long. What's more, the animal has sharp spikes on its back and this crest. Although I'm in a hurry. Let's start with the beginning. Let's start with the fact that our new hero could move both in the water and on land. That necessarily puts it at least one step above the megalodon. The shark could be crushed or attacked from somewhere above at any moment. The only thing left to do would be to bite its legs, which is not the most effective thing to do in a battle. Besides, Spinosaurus was a fish-eating, crocodile-type dinosaur, exactly what no one likes at all. The animal was hiding in an ambush and made a lightning-quick dash toward the opponent, not allowing it to move normally. This way, that first-class technique would have brought the battle to its logical conclusion. Yes, our hero was smaller than Meg, but that wouldn't stop it from hunting normally. And here I need to specify. To hunt close to the shore, because in the sea or ocean, Spinosaurus would stand no chance of winning. Meg is much more agile, faster, heavier, and tougher in the water. In all these respects, he could give Spinosaurus a head start. Since the extinct creatures wouldn't compete with the Megalodon, Bloop would have to pick up the slack. Why do I say that? Because it's the safest option. No one really knows anything about Bloop except that it's huge, strong, and dangerous. It was in 1997 when they learned about this mysterious creature. The thing is that the scientist's devices recorded a strange sound somewhere in the depths of the Pacific Ocean. The hum was heard at a distance of more than 3,000 miles and very much resembled the sound made by whales or dolphins. But none of these animals could be the source of such a loud sound. Against this background, it became accepted to believe that either it was something inanimate, which is unlikely, or some just incredibly huge creature, much larger than a megalodon, Spinosaurus, or even a blue whale. That's the case, there's not even much point in talking about their battle. Either way, Bloop wins. He'll just suck up the megalodon like a small fish without blinking an eye. Do you think Bloop is real? Is it true that somewhere out there far away on the ocean floor such a large creature could live? According to the classics of the genre, the less we know about Bloop, the more people start to fantasize about it. Everyone wonders what exactly the giant underwater monster might look like if it really exists. No one has an answer to this question, but for some reason it's commonly believed that this creature is similar to a whale, many times exceeding it in size. At the same time, in some pictures Bloop resembles a dinosaur or a giant underwater lizard, while in others it's something between a whale and a giant squid. Some images are quite surreal and literally boggle the imagination. Well, since we started talking about mystical creatures, it's impossible not to mention the well-known Kraken. It's described as a huge sea monster with many tentacles and incredible powers. The legends about the monster are based on a variety of stories about attacks on ships which were shared with people, experienced sailors or travelers. As for Kraken, the creature became known long ago, hundreds of years ago. It's unlikely that in those days people wanted to be discussed. Most likely they really saw a giant mollusk. It's interesting that in different legends, Kraken has different external features and abilities. In some stories, it has the head of a polyp and huge tentacles, while in others, looks like a huge squid. 
In some lore, its size reaches colossal proportions, making the monster a truly epic creature. Whatever the case, it should be able to defeat the Megalodon without too much trouble. Now I'll tell you about the craziest shark battles captured on camera. Tiger Shark vs. Hammerhead Shark The Tiger Shark is considered one of the most dangerous sharks in the world for a reason. It's a very aggressive predator with well-developed senses. Its bloodlust is programmed on a genetic level. An interesting fact, the Tiger Shark, the Bull Shark, and the Great White Shark are commonly referred to as the Big Three Killers because of their frequent involvement in attacks on humans. However, in this video, which was filmed in Louisiana, the water lovers were not the prey. They were spectators watching the tiger shark attack its relative, the hammerhead shark. Hit the like button if you didn't think sharks could attack other sharks, too. From the outside, the fight looked extremely pointless. The tiger shark waited for the right moment and grabbed the hammerhead shark right on the side of its torso, to which it could no longer respond in any way. But the tiger shark didn't plan to fight it off in one go. It let the hammerhead shark go for a few seconds, swam around it, and then came in again, making exactly the same attack. At this point, the video ended, but it looked like the second attack was supposed to be the final one. No matter how you look at it, it's unrealistic to get away from a fresh shark when the prey's already received several serious wounds with those razor-sharp teeth. Shark vs. Octopus When a shark is hungry, it's best not to stand in its way. What could possibly come out of this? See for yourself. Not the biggest, but still a shark, looking for prey, came across an octopus camouflaged somewhere in the rocks. Confidently, it swam up to it and began to pull it out of hiding. The hunt was not prolonged because several sharp movements of the predator were enough to make the octopus completely exhausted and ended up in the shark's mouth. Researchers of the underwater world are boring me. That must have been what the shark in the following video thought, as it stumbled upon a sea snake, though not the most nourishing but still an easy prey. The predator swam up behind it, opened its mouth, but oops, the shark hit some equipment, which served as a stabilizer for the surveillance camera. Because of this, the snake quickly got out of there and the shark was left with nothing. After a while, you can see how the same shark returned to the place of its failure and decided to take revenge on the camera with the nasty equipment, which deprived it of a delicious lunch. Shark vs. Turtle The next battle took place off the coast of the Australian region of Ningaloo in Western Australia. Thanks to the crystal clear water, we can clearly see what's happening without diving or any special equipment. This time, for sure, none of the spectators will interfere with the natural process. A tiger shark stalked a mouth-watering turtle that was totally unprepared for the attack. If you consider all the maneuverability of tiger sharks, the turtle's chances of escape seem to be almost zero. After all, thanks to its perfectly developed dorsal fin, the tiger shark can make fast jerks. It also serves as a hinge that allows the shark to swivel quickly, and the reflective layer of the retina allows it to better capture photons of light, which in turn gives the shark better visibility in unfavorable conditions. You listen to all this and think, no, the turtle doesn't stand a chance. However, the unexpected surprise in the form of a shark attack was not the reason for the creature with the shell to lose. Most likely, it was a ninja turtle because it has to be able to dodge so cleverly. The turtle turned to the shark with its shell after each somersault, which prevented the predator from using its sharp teeth for their intended purpose. As a result, no matter how hard the shark tried, no matter which side it swam up from, the tiny turtle remained untouched. Shark vs. Moray Eel Moray Eels What do you know about these creatures? For example, did you know that one of the species of moray eels put forward an additional pair of jaws during hunting? When it grabs its prey, the moray eel immediately pushes it down its gullet. This allows the predator to hunt very large fish. It's not difficult to guess that moray eels are not at all easy prey, like small turtles or squids. However, the shark in the following video decided to hunt it anyway. It tracked the moray eel among the reefs in which moray eels usually live, and then rushed towards it sharply and grabbed its torso with its sharp teeth. The shark's grip turned out to be dead indeed, for the prey never managed to get out of it. Great White Shark vs. Fur Seal What would the episode be without the Great White Shark? This predator is known all over the world for many factors. 
For example, the bite force of the great white shark is more than four times more powerful than that of a lion. In addition to its mind-blowing bite, the shark has a unique coloration that makes it faintly visible in the underwater world, and this is true even considering the enormous size of the creature itself. It can reach a length of over 16 feet. Well, because great white sharks have a large torso, it means that the mouth is huge, and as a consequence, the predator has a lot of teeth. Inside there are several rows of triangular sharp teeth, their heights up to 2 inches. The number can be 300, but in some cases it reaches 3,000. The peculiarity of the teeth is that each of them has a special serration that helps them make the bite more painful and serious. With such size and such strength, it might seem that the great white shark should at least be slow, but it's not. In fact, the great white shark can accelerate up to 35 miles per hour. Now think about it. What chances did this fur seal have against such a monster? That's right, there was no chance at all. <laughs> Hammerhead Shark The following underwater creature, which has already been shown in this episode, is rightfully considered one of the most intimidating inhabitants of the seas and oceans. The unusual shape of the hammerhead shark's head is striking and raises many questions. Some would think that since the eyes are so far apart, the shark's vision is not great and it can be easily fooled, but everyone who thinks so would be wrong. In fact, the opposite is true. Because of this positioning of the eyes, they give the shark a 360-degree view. The fish can even see what's going on behind its back. But the hammerhead shark is so strong and tough that it can hunt even without them. How? It's simple. It's helped by its unique sensory organs, which allow it to capture electricity. With this, the predator can smell other animals from several kilometers away, even in zero visibility conditions. And yes, as many might think, electric rays are a favorite prey of these sharks. They easily find them and catch them in unforgiving ways. But if you think this only happens in the wild, you're wrong. This video shows a hammerhead shark attacking a ray in one of the oceanariums. It's not clear what exactly caused it to do that. Maybe this will be a wake-up call for the staff that the animals should be better fed. In any case, the ray had no chance at all. Firstly, it was several times smaller than the shark, and secondly, it couldn't hide from the predator. The locators would have given the shark a clue anyway. Oh my gosh. Gosh. And again the hammerhead shark. This time the prey of the predatory creature with an unusual head shape was the Jewfish, or as it's also called, the Atlantic Goliath Grouper. The Jewfish is a rather large creature which can reach 8.2 feet in length and weigh up to 1,000 pounds. However, such a large size in the case of a hungry hammerhead shark will only play to the advantage of the predator because it can better satiate. According to eyewitnesses, the Atlantic Goliath Grouper was recently caught by fishermen. Most likely, they did it too quickly, which resulted in a bloated stomach. This caused the Atlantic Goliath Grouper to dangle in the water and barely move, making it ideal prey for the fast and agile shark. Although the video doesn't show us the whole process, we can rely on the words of the man behind the camera. He said that the hammerhead shark repeatedly pounced on the Atlantic Goliath Grouper and eventually massacred the fish. However, because of its small mouth and the rough scales of its prey, the predator was unable to eat the fish. The shark needed help from congeners, which were not present at the time. As a result, it spent some time near the large prey and soon swam away. White Shark vs. Seal Today we've already had the great white shark, and you've seen what it can do and how dangerous and agile this monster of the depths is, and this video will be another proof of that. It shows how the great white shark sensed its prey from many hundreds of meters away, the prey in the form of many seals at once. With the help of its senses, the shark calculated the location of the preys and soon found itself there. The seals that realized this were powerless and had to swim away at random. However, some of them, by some unfortunate coincidence, still had to feed the predator with themselves. The bull shark became a prey. This is exactly the order of the words that you will not often hear, because the bull shark is, by rights, one of the most dangerous in the entire world. This underwater predator is characterized by a special type of movement during the hunt. It sharply changes the direction of movement and often its muzzle is elevated. This suggests that it's used to getting food from the surface of the water. 
Because of this, by the way, often its target is people. And because of this, in 1916 there was an attack in New Jersey which inspired writer Peter Benchley to write the cult novel Jaws. So the bull shark is a very strong creature. But there's no creature in the wild that's invulnerable, and this video is direct proof of that. A group of friends were fishing, they caught a bull shark and were happy when suddenly a bigger fish emerged from the water abyss. It was some other shark which bit off the shark's tail in the blink of an eye. We weren't shown how this battle ended, but according to eyewitnesses, the bigger shark dealt with the prey. Water spaces are still underexplored and cover a lot of unknown creatures. Now I'll tell you about the most dangerous river monsters. Do you like fishing? Something tells me that many of you adore this activity because it's so great to sit in complete silence, watch the water surface, think about life, and of course, what's even cooler, to catch a fish. But if any representative of the underwater world would do for us, a man named Jeremy Wade has much higher demands. To satisfy his desires, he went to Africa and caught there a real Goliath tigerfish. Let me tell you, it wasn't an easy job. Not everyone can pull 110 pounds, and even the length of more than a yard is really surprising. But having caught this real devil underwater, you need not just relax, but on the contrary, you need to gain even more focus. After all, this fish has as many as 32 sharp teeth which are shaped like fangs. So one wrong move and no one can correct the mistake. Not everyone can handle a fish like this. It's not for nothing that this creature is among those caught by fishermen for sport. By the way, it can be found both in small rivers and in fast-flowing reservoirs. This is because the fish can easily overcome obstacles because of its large and powerful body. Underwater Mabenga, as it's nicknamed by the locals, has virtually no equal. With small fish, it has a short conversation, and with the big ones, everything's almost as easy. It tears them up and then consumes them in pieces. And here's another curious fact. If Mabenga doesn't get enough underwater, it'll start chasing birds that are within reach. And if birds aren't enough for it, the next prey will be a real crocodile. And yes, this creature is not without difficulty, but still has successful examples of attacking these reptiles. Myth or reality? That's what they say about the next creature I'll show you. In fact, given the dexterity of river monster hunters, I'm surprised that people haven't managed to catch a crocodile. I'm talking about a crocodile named Gustave, who has become a real legend and at the same time an object of fear for the inhabitants of Africa. He was born in the mid-20th century and has not been caught since. And you'll ask the logical question, why catch him at all? What did he do? How can I tell you? At the very least, he ate a hundred people, if not more. The size of this creature is also not known for sure, but people have speculated that he could exceed 20 feet in length and weigh as much as a ton. With a high degree of probability, it is the largest crocodile that inhabits all of Africa. This creature is so interesting to ordinary people that in 2004, there was even a documentary about him showing an unsuccessful attempt to catch him. People used to think that Gustav was 100 years old or more. It was time that made him so big. But in that case, scientists contradict themselves because Gustav has a full set of teeth, which is definitely not a characteristic of a 100-year-old predator. At that age, he should have been toothless a long time ago. Speaking of teeth and size, they're presumably the reason why the crocodile became an ogre. His unusual size and mass prevents him from hunting typical Nile crocodile prey, large fish, water bucks, antelopes, and other creatures, because they're too nimble for it. Whether to believe in Gustav's existence to this day is up to you to decide. Some have speculated that he long since passed away and is no longer a nuisance to the locals. However, a couple of years later, an expedition discovered Gustav and the claim was disproved. That's all, guys. Which river monster from this episode seemed to you the creepiest? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.